Hi and welcome everybody to today's webinar. Woo! With you today we got uh, me, Gustav Aurén, and my colleague Johan at uh, Start Deliver. Uh, we have a quite exciting agenda for today. We will uh, cover everything on churn, all from what, what is churn to why do we get it, uh, how do we address it and plan for it, when it happens, how do we deal with it, and how do we forecast the churn in the future so we can prevent it. Uh, as usual, you can send your questions during the webinar and we have a short Q&A at the end where we'll try and answer all your questions. And this webinar is, as always, being recorded and will be sent out afterwards, so you will get all the material. So to start off, what is churn, Johan? Yes, I think churn is uh, probably one of the worst uh, words uh, in customer success in one way. I think everybody has a bad, uh, get a bad vibe when you he hear the word, uh, even if it's something we, we talk about a lot. Uh, and it has to do with uh, the emotions you get when you have a customer canceling on you. Uh, I think uh, everyone who's been working in customer success in, in, in any way uh, has been uh, been through that experience where you all of a sudden uh, one customer you you get an email you get a phone call whatever happens and they they want to terminate uh, the contract and uh, you you start thinking what went wrong was it my fault what will the what will my manager say how can I turn this around what can I do is it all over what I, I think a lot of emotions come 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 to life. Yeah. when you when you get a churn so um, uh, from from that point of view it's uh, it's something we have to deal with and, and I think that's the main uh, agenda point today is how do we deal with this issue uh, because it is an issue and it's an important one uh, and I think you can also uh, live with it you can st you can uh, if you do the right things you can start accepting that churn will be always be around in some way and you can see how how to move and maneuver in that uh, when you receive a cancellation yeah and churn can be a good thing i mean from my perspective coming from sales i've seen so many cases where you try to avoid churn at all cost but it can be the opposite. If you don't grow fast enough, you won't get that churn that will teach you how to develop your product for your niche or your customers in the best way. Yeah. So uh, try and turn it to a good thing. <laughs> no, exactly. Some churn will be uh, come with uh, the, the growth you're having or the new market you're entering or the, the expansion of your product into new areas. Uh, of course, there, there is a natural element uh, in it. But in one way, uh, customer success role is in, 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 uh, in many ways to avoid churn. Yeah. Just to bring it back to the basics, what is this churn? I got the question a few days ago uh, from, from one of, uh, in a meeting, what, what do you mean when you talk about churn? So uh, let, let's just clarify that and be uh, very transparent and back to basics here. So churn is, uh, you usually talk about churn uh, as ARR churn or MRR churn and you talk as a percentage point. So churn is basically how, how much of your ARR or MRR have you lost. That can be both whole uh, accounts and it can also be downgrades. That's your uh, churn basically. Usually people break it down into uh, and you, se you separate those. So ARR churn and uh, in this example here we, we look at 10% lost customers and 7% downgrades, and that will give you like a, a gross churn of 17%. When you talk churn, you also talk usually about retention. You talk about uh, gross revenue retention, and you talk about net revenue retention. Uh, and sometimes you even talk about net churn. Um, and when you talk net, you actually include upgrades. So uh, sometimes you can, you can upgrade and you can expand on your customers and that in that way you will cover the churn with uh, new business on existing customers. So net revenue retention is a very important KPI because that that looks at how much can we actually grow on existing customers. 
after we have deducted for churn, basically. That's a little bit about what churn is uh, in term in financial terms and and in how we look on on uh, on, on churn uh, when we when we evaluate uh, our business from a financial point of view. And uh, as I think a lot of people also know, is looking on the long term. The, the, the actual churn number you have will have a big impact on how fast you can grow. Right. Churn is actually negative growth. And if you, if you have negative growth on your every customer you bring in, that will, of course, make the total growth of the company very difficult. So uh, that's why customer success is important and growing in importance. It's right. because we have... We have uh, we have an opportunity to to actually change and positively improve the growth of the whole company. So that's why I think churn is so important, and we a lot of people talk about churn uh, and retention, and uh, customer success is a direct uh, link to to that uh, financial number. In this webinar, we will not go in all depth into uh, financials. We will talk more practical and, and how to do this in a day-to-day -day customer success uh, organization, basically. And churn as a financial number uh, is only actually a symptom of other issues. Right. And I think it's really important to address those issues. Right. And here we borrow a few uh, uh, a few good root causes that Lincoln Murphy talks about, and we fully agree with these. And we uh, we want to go through these before we go into the next chapter. Uh, and if you have problems with churn, there is one or a f or a mix of these that's the actual root cause for you having that churn. And starting off, bad fit customers. Uh, if you have bad fit customers, uh, you will have uh, a problem with churn, for sure. You need to start understanding and start mapping out what are good fit customers and, more importantly, what are the characteristics of bad fit customers. We'll come back to that later and uh, talk, uh, talk through a few examples of how to do that. But unless you address bad fit customers, you will still you will not be able to have an impact on your churn. Yeah. And remember, customer success people out there, you're not responsible <laughs> for these bad fit customers. It's it's like everything else in, in a churn perspective. It might be many causes, there might be single causes. But what you have to do here is be, as we always say, drivers of change and make sure that you don't bring in more of these bad fit customers and bring in more of those good fit customers mentioned there. Exactly. Uh, so these are, these are universal, uh, if you like, problems in wi in within your company yeah. uh, that y you probably have to involve a lot of people in, in order to solve. But we are, as customer success, uh, responsible for highlighting these and uh, making these transparent. Another problem uh, is broken or incomplete product. And somehow this could, I mean, it sounds obvious that we should not work with a broken product or an incomplete product, but I think it's more, it, it's more common than you think uh, that, that, that could, that's actually one of the root causes for churn. Uh, I know from uh, previous companies and I know from uh, talking to a lot of uh, customer success uh, co uh, managers and uh, product managers for that part as well. And Sometimes we, we, f we, f we focus all the time on bringing in new features when we actually have issues with existing features that the customer, they, they suffer from this. Yeah. And uh, it works in the sales process because then they don't really use the feature, but when they become a customer, they get stuck and, and uh, that can be part of or the whole reason for them churning lately. So that's also something. Uh, another one is we have we, we don't give the customer the experience they want. Uh, we we have we have a f we usually this is the case when you focus all about the product, but don't think about the complete experience of working with you as a vendor. 
Uh, and the experience starts actually from the first visit to your website or the first appointment or the first call you, you have with the customer. And it goes uh, all the way to, to them signing the agreement, onboarding, getting training, getting help, uh, whatever it is around your product. It's the complete experience. Mm -hmm. And I, I have myself done uh, a lot of uh, mistakes in this area. Uh, one, po one point in one company I worked in, we outsourced our support. And that was clearly not the experience our customers wanted. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, of course, changed that later, but we tried to outsource our support and uh, we, 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 got, we, we had direct churn from it and probably a few indirect churn uh, as well. So, so the experience matters and uh, if you're too product focused, you sometimes forget the experience is the whole uh, interaction with your company. Uh, so uh, that could be another issue. Another root cause. The fourth uh, on this list is that we, as uh, uh, the vendor, we as the people working for the company, the people working closest to the customer, we do not know what success is for the customer. Yeah. This is, of course, um, um, can vary, of course, a lot between uh, what kind of service and product you provide. But sometimes uh, we don't know really what the customer uses our product for or what they want to achieve. And if we don't know that, then we can, of course, not uh, cater for that and make that happen. Yeah. So um, make sure that everybody knows what the success is for a customer yeah. uh, uh, internally. And this is usually told in the sales process in the beginning, but lost some somewhere on the way and to becoming a customer yeah uh, there's usually like this big vision in the start on the value you want out of the product but then when you get started you get missed out some parts here and there and uh, in the end when they churn you're yeah. totally gone off track exactly and it's yeah. usually this is of course very clear in top management and the leadership team and usually in sales because otherwise you don't bring in customers but yeah. then this can somehow get lost yeah. and uh, in that case you uh, you will have a, a, a root cause for churn. Yeah. Lastly on this list is that you, you don't have a real structure for working with your customers uh, after onboarding, sometimes even in onboarding. How do we bring this customer to their, their goal, to their desired outcome to wor working with us? Uh, and we don't have a process, we don't have a structure for this. And if we don't, if we don't, we're, if we're not deliberate about how this is going to happen, yeah. we leave it up to chance. Yeah. And then, of course, this could also be uh, the chance of them churning out from us. So yeah. we need to have the structure and the process for the working with the customer and getting them, uh, getting them uh, the value they wanted from the beginning. Yeah. So, so this is some root causes of why we uh, have the financial uh, figure in uh, churn. Yeah. And I think you c should get back to these root causes as well. I mean, like you one mentioned, the, the, st the structure for success, it's ever changing as well. You have to ask the customer more than Absolutely. once. You can't have the best handover ever from sales and then just use that value prop as your success story for all the time going forward. I mean, you have to go back to the customer and ask them again. Or when a new user comes on board, ask them as well. What is, what is it that you want from this product? What do you want in the coming 90 days or coming year from this product? What's the w value that you need? Yeah. I think that's really important here as well. No, it changes. Um, your product develops, the customer yeah. develops. So it's uh, it's an infinite uh, relationship in the best in the best of worlds. Yeah. Um, and that you have to adopt and you have to always uh, look for the next step. Yeah. So those are the few ro root causes. But uh, even if you have a great plan to fix all these things and become uh, flawless in every area, you still have a reality to face. And um, I think Mike Tyson uh, actually. <laughs> put this in a very uh, nice way yeah. even if you have this great plan still shit hits the fan you get punched in the face and i think that's how churn feels sometimes for us yeah. uh, looking after the customer yeah so what do you do 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Mark Tyson had a plan for being hit as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, probably. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, basically what it comes down to is that two of three of the companies out there, they, d- they don't have a plan for churn. And that's what we think is the next step and what you need to think about. And we think that the first step in such a plan is uh, to try and win back the customer or have a plan for winning the customer back in the future. And uh, we actually stumbled upon a quite interesting thing the other day when me and Johan was uh, about to uh, cancel our subscription to uh, Zoom. Um, Actually, this uh, little window here popped up and uh, we got a discount offer for 60%. That's awesome. I mean, this is definitely a great win back uh, strategy. But it's also a quite, um, it's, I, I believe some, it stings for some of you out there that's using Zoom uh, to see this ad or this uh, promotion come up uh, because you're paying full price. And we are trying to end our service and we're getting a better price than you guys are getting, even though we might have been customers for like five or ten years. And um, this is a topic that we really... Uh, struggle with going into uh, Corona with a lot of our customers and a lot of their customers as well because uh, we saw all these uh, companies put up great strategies for uh, sales, for marketing, they got discounts for signing up, Uh, they got free periods uh, in the start, they got free onboarding, they got all these kinds of uh, great stuff if you wanted to become a customer during the Corona crisis. Uh, But when we asked them what are you doing for your current customers? Uh, the plan was not as solid. Um, They didn't have the same discounts for current customers. Maybe they haven't had a plan at all for current customers. And giving a customer a 60% off uh, that has been a client for five years for that year or for a time period, I mean, that's probably much better than giving the new prospect this discount. So this is an automated win back. And a tip for you all out there, um, I mean, we even asked Zoom for a better discount or for a better pricing before we were going to determine the the service and they didn't even reply. Um, It would have been way better if (laughs) we would have gotten a reply there with an offer more personalized than this. But yeah, same back to basics here. Are we treating our happy customers, our evangelists, our champions the same way as we're treating the others? I think that's a good perspective to have. And to have a plan for a winback is definitely much better than to not have a plan for a winback. And I believe there are five important stages that you or points that you should bullets that you should work through. And one, the first, and one that is more often <laughs> than seldom being missed, which is uh, in our point of view um, kind of strange is that you don't talk to your customers. Mm. That's the first step. Talk to your customers. Ask them why. There, there might be a personal reason. There might be, uh, an, it might be enough to just ask for forgiveness and ask for a new chance. Yeah. That might turn the customer around. But that's, n- of course, not always the case. But make sure you communicate. And if you have low-touch customers or even no-touch customers, yeah, then you make those email campaigns. Make sure that you have a purpose in those to re-engage the customers. But if you have the high-touch customers, then, of course, call them book meetings, talk to them, make it even more personal uh, personal by um, yeah, by talking to them one to one. But sometimes, of course, this doesn't work and you have to, for example, make an offer, um, try to use discounts, uh, try to put in extra services, uh, try to extend periods uh, for free maybe, uh, and A-B test these different strategies um, and try and see which one of them is working best or and even maybe segment mm. your customer pool into different segments and use different strategies for those segments. Yeah. Uh, and here's when we come to this third bullet uh, about being strategic. I usually talk about FOMO here uh, because uh, that's a big reason for coming back as well. If you got this really good feature that you know you're building for that customer segment, but it's not ready yet, Present it to them, show it. Uh, this is the new feature coming soon. It will add a lot of val- value to your, uh, to our services or our product in, in your deliverance. And um, 
maybe offer that add-on or that feature for free or make them a bet- beta tester if you think it can give them more value. Mm. And always, always ask for feedback. That's even if you're a no-touch uh, based uh, customer success team or if you're a high-touch based customer success team, always ask for feedback because, I mean, that's one of the best ways of showing the customers that you really care. Ask them about the feedback and try and act on it. That's, that's the fourth bullet. And the fifth one is test and measure. Do this stuff uh, independent of how your processes look like. If you talk to your customers, you make offers, you're being strategic about it, and you're asking for feedback all the time, then you can iterate this process and make sure that you uh, develop and um, win back more customers. Yeah. And if you, as a CSM or um, individual customer success uh, uh, person, uh, don't see that you have like these offers to be made to the customers, then you need to talk internally about this. Because yeah. I think uh, if you're too rigid here and you don't have any flexibility, you for sure are missing, uh, you're, you're, you're losing customers that you could win back, actually. Yeah. And on the other side, of course, you will need to have a, a structure for this. And you need to have, like, um, probably you need um, uh, to escalate, to ask to your manager to, to get to do these offers. But I think it's make a simple uh, grid or make a simple uh, matrix for what you can do in, in different scenarios yeah. and have clear rules internally. Uh, so you always have something here to do. Yeah reach out uh, and, and, and offer something. Yeah. And as Gustav said, I think it's, it sounds a little bit um, maybe a, a that it would be a given, but a lot of people are afraid to actually ask for the second chance and ask to be forgiven or ask to, ha- what do we need to do to get you back as a customer? Yeah. What ha- do we have to do? Uh, I think it needs an, uh, you need a, l- a little humbleness and you need to also be really sincere that you want them back as a customer yeah. and you want them back because you think you can help them. Really. Yeah. And, and, and if you do that, I, I know for experience that a lot of customers respond positively to that. And of course, not all the time, but sometimes they do actually change. Yeah. And if you're having a hard time making these calls or if you're thinking that you put yourself in a tough spot, um, try and ask sales for help here because sales, they, they, they like hit the brick wall every day. <laughs> they get these no's, they get these uh, like m- motivations why your product is not good or why your services are bad. They get this every day. So they're used to handling those kind of situations as well. And uh, train on this call, train on these meetings to make sure that you can have a plan. Um, as said, I think any win back plan, I mean, like the example there with Zoom, it's definitely better than not having it. I'm certain that uh, Zoom has tested a lot of win back strategies. And even if this uh, example might feel like it's a beginner that <laughs> set that up, I mean, it's probably really good for their churn rate. And for the next step, I mean, there are some cases that are impossible to, ha- to turn around. Uh, there's no perfect solution for a win-back strategy. Uh, and sometimes you just have to help the customer move on. And I think here's a graph that you all have seen a lot before. It's about how you acquire customers and how do customers find their information when they reach out to new vendors. And word of mouth and references is always going to be on top going forward. When the internet is developing as it is, there's so many niche products. Uh, references and word of mouth is going to be the most important way of moving forward. And how do you make these customers have that good feel when they leave you? So they actually say good things about you even or even come back if things don't go as planned uh, with the other solution or with a competitor or whatever way they are choosing. Uh, So therefore, I believe strongly that you have to have a really set offboarding plan as well. And here I've put down six bullets uh, that I think are the most important ones to go through as well. And this is regardless of process as well. Uh, So the first one is to close the loop. 
do you have any old or maybe rendered uh, things from the starting deal that you, you that you still have to go through? Do you have um, do you have a process uh, or maybe some promised uh, features or workshops or uh, something that you can uh, use in this situation to make them succeed even better without your product? Then try to use this to make that good thing. Uh, the secondly is to provide easy access to documentation. This is something that I see a lot, that you leave a customer but you don't get your data from your CRM provider. I mean, okay, you left your CRM, you're go definitely going to a new solution. If it's Excel or if it's a competitor, it doesn't really matter. You're going to need to have that data. The, the provider should give you that documentation from those workshops, those um, processes or those data flows that you have. Uh, the third part, I think, is uh, to give them an um, accurate status update on all the projects that are ongoing. And that is because if they are supposed to continue as usual when they leave your product, they have to set some stuff in place. And they might miss some of these steps. And that might be a reason for them to stay. Uh, or it might be a reason for them to talk bad about you if you didn't warn them about these things. So I think that's a really important step as well. And fourth there, going to the workflows, only the workflows. Which workflows are we affecting today? And how can we help the customers going forward uh, without these workflows or, or even these automations of work workflows that we might have set up for them? And as always, ask for feedback. It's so important. Uh, even here in the offboarding phase, make sure you make the customer feel that you really care about them. If that's the feeling when you leave, they will always see different uh, reasons for leaving you, but it is not the service or the feel good then. And lastly, I think you should thank your customers. And when I say thank your customers, I don't mean thank them for uh, breaking up. I mean, we all have been in breakups and it can be super tough uh, for both parts. It can be tough for your customers as well. They might have a relationship with your customer success that is have gone on for years. Uh, but the next step here should be to celebrate the good things that have been. Try and make the customer remember those things. And I think the next step here um, is to uh, after you have done this on offboarding plan, you need to analyze, okay, why did this customer leave us? And what can we do going forward? <coughs> okay, so how can we analyze this churn? So I think that first it differs if you're low touch or high touch. Uh, I mean, if you're low touch, you can send out emails, you can send out surveys, but it's hard to get personal here. Uh, even if you're high touch and your CSM can even call the customers, it's very hard to get down to the real reason why. I think one good way of moving forward here to solve those is to have someone from leadership, maybe talk to the stakeholders instead, or even have an external firm uh, ask these questions or send out these um, surveys uh, towards the customers to get those more honest answers. And we actually tried an exercise here where we tried to split up uh, what we can act on and what we can't act on. And what you can see here is uh, Lincoln Murphy's uh, churn classification method. And uh, as you can see here, we have unavoidable and avoidable um, churn reasons. The same thing as what we can act on and what we can't act on. Um, I would like to start with what's unavoidable, what we can't act on. And that is usually seen as bad fit customers, they're supposed to leave anyway, or maybe high risk customers that go bankrupt, you couldn't do anything about that. But actually I believe you can flip the coin here and look at these uh, in another way. Because in, the, in this moment here now, yeah, sure, you can't do anything about it, it's unavoidable churn. But in the long term, you can actually do something about it. You can change that classification on what a good or a bad fit customer is, and you can make sure that you don't have those customers in your pool, so they churn because of this reason. But if you move over to the avoidable uh, part, 
where you might put all these things that Johan has been speaking about earlier in the webinar, like broken or incomplete product, missing features, bad experience, uh, stuff like that that you think you can act on. What we have um, experienced here doing this exercise with a lot of customers and companies is that even if you can come down to that one customer left because of pricing, it might not be only because of pricing. Because if you raise the value in the product or if you had different features, the pricing might not have been an issue. So it's really hard to move forward um, using that kind of analysis. Therefore, this is actually one of the reasons why Start Deliver got started in the first place. How can we avoid the unexpected churn and expect churn instead? Then we can move on those signals early and we can predict which customers are in a risk zone. So therefore, I think this framework is really, really good to work with anyways, because you have to split them in into what is being unexpected and expected, not what can be avoided and what cannot. No, so we should never, ever get unexpected churn. I think that's the main goal here. So we are in control. Uh, not like this picture here where you actually ask the, the customer to yell at you uh, when, when they want to churn. Uh, the other way, uh, and I think this is something, uh, this might, l might sound um, strange, but I think still a lot of companies operate in this manner. They actually wait for the customer to, to yell out uh, or send in the trans cancellation and then they act. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's of course the opposite what, uh, to, to what you should be doing and uh, that's what we're going to talk about now. Uh, because you need to be uh, on top of things and to be on top of things you need to start analyzing the customer and look at the leading measurements here. You have the financial measurements and you will see when, when a customer uh, drops uh, in usage, you will see when they drop, if they cancel with you or if they decrease uh, or they downsize or whatever they do. But you need to start looking at uh, real measurements on uh, where they are. Uh, this is examples uh, from, uh, from our world, from, from Start Deliver product. Uh, how do usage, how do they perform, how active are they in the product? Are they using all parts of the product or only some parts? Uh, and how is that trending? Uh, is it trending up or down? You can very easily detect uh, how, how it's going by, by just looking at usage. Yeah. Um, then you have the experience part. Are we delivering? Are they appreciating us as a company, as a partner, or are we missing out there? If they're giving you poor feedback in the MPS, that's a signal for sure. If you have over overdue tickets in your support uh, and you haven't solved all the bugs or issues they have reported to you, then that's a ticking bomb as well. Yeah. You always have these uh, signals and uh, it's always the case when you get unexpected churn that you can find evidence earlier on uh, that you were not looking at. So one of the key things to be uh, on top of, of this is to see the data and have the data in front of you, ex easy ac accessible and uh, preferably getting notifications uh, when you need to act as well. Uh, and if you have that, then you are uh, in a position to actually prioritize and, and put your efforts where it uh, really needs to be. Um, so that's, that's how you like uh, move to, to fix churn um, in, a, in a pragmatic way uh, and, and in a, both in a semi-long-term uh, semi and a long-term uh, perspective. Just to round off, uh, we are a little bit over time, um, but how, how can we do a big dent in churn in the, the long term? Uh, and how do we wh what do we actually do? So, first of all, we, we talked about this earlier, but you need to stop selling to bad fit customers. And I th that's easy to say, but what do you do? 
So here, here is uh, a few ways forward uh, to get closer to that. First of all, what are the characteristics of a bad fit customer? What are the technical characteristics, the functional, the resources, the competence, the experience and the cultural? There is a template here we will share with you uh, on how to, how to just identify what a bad fit customer is. And when you have done that, look at a few of the customers that have churned that you believe are bad fit. Where did we miss out? What, where are the gray areas? Where is it hard up to interpretation? The gray areas are usually where you, uh, where sales will interpret it as a good fit, but it's actually a bad fit. So this is where you need to dig in and, and, and try to clarify it as, as clear as possible. Yeah. Um, I think that's uh, like a job you have to do in a workshop together with probably a sales team or head of sales uh, to get that right. Yeah. And even marketing and service as well. I mean, you might have marketing trying to bring in customers that are bad fit. You might have your service team working on support errands day and night that are actually bad fit customers when they could be focusing on the good fit customers and supporting them with their tickets and being even faster and better. So, yeah. Yeah. And in these gray areas, the handover is so critical. Yeah. Because... If, the, if sales knows this is a gray area and they are a little bit uncertain on this customer, they can at least, if they've signed the customer, they can talk about it and highlight this so we upfront can manage it. Yeah. Uh, and this is something, if you, if you try to hide those things, that will be a really bad experience and usually make things even worse. Yeah. And communicate this to the customer as well, because they will get this experience sooner or later anyways. Yeah. But there's usually some way of working around it and present that and try to solve for the customer in that moment. Yeah. And I think the big test here is, of course, that when you have done this work and you have highlighted these things, is it respected by sales? And usually it has to, co has, has to do with is it respected of top management internally? Yeah. Do they care about this or, or are we still signing bad fit customers? Yeah. Um, if they don't, uh, make them l listen to one of our webinars and I think they will change their mind. <laughs> unless, you, unless you want our help in any, in any other way. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Another thing is to take these uh, bugs or features or whatever problems you have in the product and invest in actually fixing them. Not on the surface level, but really fixing them. Um, we, we, we need to stop, uh, stop one or two sprints and take them to really fix uh, actual uh, features that are not working as they should be working. Uh, that's an investment, but it's an investment in keeping customers. Product usually wants to go on to the next uh, part in the roadmap and to develop new features. But this is also some here management, product management, leadership team needs to pu uh, pull the brake. Yeah. And they, they will only do that if you highlight this and are very clear where, where to prioritize in the product. Yeah. Thirdly, are we investing in making uh, the team ready to do real customer success work? If we spend time on, on uh, being more of an advanced support function, are we spending time being pre-sales, helping sales close deals? Are we spending time administrating content, training users? All these things are important and really bring value, but those are not the things that we need to do as a customer success team. So if, if we don't uh, visualize and, uh, be or, and, and be transparent on where we spend our time and where we should be spending our time, uh, management can never invest in, in more people, in better resources, uh, in, in better tools, whatever you need to do the real customer success work. Yeah. So usually uh, a way to really make a difference in the long-term churn uh, rate is that we are underinvested uh, invested in resources in, in the customer success area. And that can be bringing in su another person to support, that can be bringing in a spe specialist role in onboarding, that can be investing in a customer success platform, that can be uh, investing in 
uh, a better training facility or, or uh, people doing training. Uh, there's a lot of things here, but, but usually if we, if we try to uh, run customer success on uh, fumes or very, very little resources, that has that, that it's a cost linked to that as well, and that's a, a higher churn rate than it needs to be. Yeah. Um, lastly, we need to make uh, cust- the work of customer success uh, transparent internally. Uh, we need to visualize the leading measurements uh, that impact churn. And what we mean here is that churn. Ev- Fin- the, the financial uh, uh, figure of churn is a, is a lagging measurement. Yeah. The leading measurement is actually how the customer is doing and how that is doing overall uh, is something you can measure. Are they using our, our product? Are, th- are they getting, the g- getting to the outcomes they want? Are they having the experience they want? That's something we can track on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. And we can visualize it internally yeah. on big screens and we can visualize it in reports on the morning meetings. Yeah. This is something that brings a culture into the company, a culture about keeping the customer. And, and the, the only way to do that in the long term is to really make them uh, reach their uh, outcomes. Yeah. Uh, and this is something we need to communicate a lot. Sales is really good in communicating how it's going for them. Uh, customer success needs to communicate internally uh, how it's going for them uh, as well. Yeah, definitely so important. Yeah, so uh, I think if you if you take action on those four things in twelve months, I'm I'm positive you will have impacted your your churn rate. All right, just to summarize today's webinar. Uh, Everybody in customer success, we hate to lose customers, but it is part of our uh, job. It's part of our responsibility to manage when we get churn. So the best thing here is to have a good plan for it. And the plan starts by having a win back strategy. How can we keep them? Is it a way forward or is it not? And when it's not, we need to have a plan for how to offboard them in the best possible way. We have, we have to look at it in the long view, take the long view here. And these people, this company can come back as a customer. The people working at the company can come back as a, a, co- a customer in a new company. There's so much to, to win by, by doing it in the good way. How to turn it around, how to make sure not a problem anymore. We need to start looking at the leading measurements. We need to measure how the customers are performing how they're doing, are they getting the outcomes they want, are they, are they appreciating us as a partner. We need to have data on that. Yeah. When we have data, we can actually act on it and we can drive it. Yeah. That's, that's how you avoid churn going forward. Yeah. In addition to that, we need to address some root causes to churn. And those root causes are usually uh, solved by not only us, but the company. But we are responsible for highlighting them. We can take action on them and we can bring bring the attention of top management and and we can actually have a real impact on churn rate within 12 months by by improving on these root causes. That's the summary. That's the the webinar in in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed it. We really enjoyed it. We're so uh, happy to have you uh, listening in, taking part of this. Um. Yeah, thank you guys. Been amazing time, and uh, hope you get to hello, or manage to expect um, a little bit more churn after this. And uh, don't communicate about uh, avoidable or unavoidable churn, but communicate around how can we expect this the next time it happens. All right, uh, we are also open for some Q&A, of course. Um, please uh, ask in the chat or in the Q&A uh, part of the webinar. Um, I know we're a little bit over time. Uh, we had some technical issues to start off with and um, the actual content was a little bit bigger than we um, anticipated. But uh, 
let me let us know if you have any questions um, we will of course share all the material um, you will get that as soon as possible um, and um, we will also share some of these templates that we talked about so you will get that uh, very soon uh, today um, and of course uh, let us know if you want more detailed uh, discussions, uh, specific discussions, uh, just uh, put, a, put a memo to us and we will follow that up with you. Um, again, we want to thank you for participating. Uh, we will be back with some more webinars in a, in short, in, in a very short uh, period of time. We also appreciate if you have specific uh, questions or specific topics that you would like us to cover. So uh, if you have that, reply to our memo uh, later today and uh, get, us, uh, get us that feedback. Uh, we, 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 get, we get a lot uh, of our energy from working with you and getting your thoughts and your, your challenges in this area. Um, Again, thank you all and uh, I'll see you soon and have a great day, everyone.